it's now been six full months since I had my hysterectomy and in this video I want to share with all of the women out there looking for information who have a hysterectomy in their future or have recently had a hysterectomy I want you to know what you can expect at the six month point now every woman's journey is going to be different every body is different the reason that we have hysterectomies is different for everybody so I want to share my story now that my surgery is Firmly in my rearview mirror, I want to tell you what I think about the process and how my body is reacting to no longer having all of those female things and how menopause is going for me. I was instantly thrown into surgical menopause because my ovaries were removed during my laparoscopic hysterectomy. And there is something that I have recently been realizing about my body that didn't really start happening until now. So hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Renee. I'm 52 years old and six months ago I had a laparoscopic hysterectomy. And during that procedure, my uterus my ovaries, my fallopian tubes, and my cervix were all removed. I had a very large uterine fibroid that was causing massive bleeding. There's no way to put it other than that. Heavy, heavy menstrual bleeding, lots of pain. The fibroid was so large you could see it when you look down at my stomach so i had all the complications of that plus i had some pre-cancerous cells discovered in my cervix so i had the laparoscopic hysterectomy i have several videos on my channel surgery day the first one through four days of my recovery, two weeks, three months, and now I'm at six months. And I feel like I have lots of new information to share in this video. So like I said earlier, if you are a woman with a hysterectomy in your future, or if you've recently had one, I hope the information that I'm gonna share with you can ease your mind and let you know what you can expect. So obviously, the very first thing that everybody thinks about when somebody knows you've had a hysterectomy is, I no longer have a period. And before my surgery, yes, I knew that was gonna be great to no longer have a period, but now when I'm living that life and I no longer have a period, oh my gosh, it is fabulous. It is so nice to not have to pay attention to a calendar, to have to carry tampons and pads in my purse because you never know when your period's gonna start. I can wear whatever I want to, whenever I want to. I can wear white pants, white jeans, white shorts, a white bathing suit, and never have to worry about having a period again. It is a huge burden off of my mind to know that there's never gonna be a period. And before the surgery, I just didn't grasp how significant that little fact would be, but it really has made a huge positive impact on my life, just simply eliminating the periods. And it's not just the hassle from the periods, it's everything that goes with the periods. I don't have cramps, I don't have headaches, I don't have mood swings, I don't have food cravings, none of that. My breasts aren't tender, my stomach isn't bloated. Everything that goes along with having a period has been completely eliminated. Just imagine that. And that is my reality since I've had a hysterectomy. Women have hysterectomies for lots of various reasons. And mine, like I said, was because I had a huge fibroid, massive fibroid. And now that that fibroid is been removed, I no longer have the constant pain, the sharp stabbing pain, and the aching feeling from the fibroid. I don't have that full feeling in my stomach. And the best way I can describe it, imagine if you just dropped a big rock into your stomach and it sank and sat there and you couldn't get it out. There was a heaviness and a fullness to my pelvic area that I could never escape. And the fibroid always caused me pain. It was super uncomfortable. I couldn't bend over to tie my shoes because when you bend over, you're crunching in on that fibroid and it hurt. So I had to be very careful for about a year before my surgery what I could and could not do. I certainly did not do a workout where I had to use my core muscles. I didn't want to do sit-ups. I didn't want to do lots of turning because it put pressure on the fibroid, which meant it 
hurt. So now that that's out, I am free to do all of those things. I can bend over, I can tie my shoes, I can, you know, move freely without the pain of the fibroid. And that is huge for me. Lots of women have problems with their bladder and my bladder issues were related to my fibroid. If I coughed, I peed. If I sneezed, I peed. If I laughed, I peed. And the bigger the fibroid got, the worse my bladder issues got. And now that I've had the hysterectomy, the fibroid is gone, my bladder issues have been completely resolved. 100% I no longer have a bladder issue. And it makes my husband so frustrated because he pees all the time. And I used to have to pee all the time. We went out to dinner, we'd have to go pee before we sat down at the restaurant. Then we'd have to go again before we left the restaurant. Just constantly, one of us was always having to go to the bathroom. Well, now that I've had my hysterectomy and my bladder has regained its full you know, size, its full usage, I don't have to pee all the time. It is so nice. I can leave the house and be gone for hours and never have to stop at a bathroom. So as far as my recovery at this point, how I'm feeling, it's been exactly six months since I had my hysterectomy. It was a laparoscopic surgery. I had six incisions in my belly area. I had a very, uh, what I consider difficult recovery. I had some complications with an internal hematoma. You know, I documented all that information in previous videos, which I'll link right up here and also in the description box if you want to go back and hear all of the details of my earlier recovery process. But at six months now, I truly feel fantastic. Truly. I am energetic. I have no soreness except for one thing, which I'll get to in just a minute. I feel like I am 99% recovered. My doctor told me that I am 99% recovered. There is one little section in there that he saw when he did my last exam that he said still needs a little bit of healing, but I feel great. My energy is back. My stamina is back. I don't feel weak. I don't have any of the signs of anemia, which the heavy bleeding from the fibroid was causing. My legs don't cramp anymore. My hair is no longer falling out. It, uh, you know, everything I have to say about having the hysterectomy is positive. Before the surgery, I was scared to death. I'd never had a surgery. There's so many what ifs, so many things in my mind could go wrong what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this doesn't work out right? What if I end up having this and not be able to do this? And I have to be honest and say that every fear that I had turned out to be completely unfounded. My surgery and the results of the surgery have been positive. Everything has been beneficial. I am so glad now that I went through with the surgery and I am glad that I agreed to have my ovaries removed. In lots of my other videos, women were very vocal in the comments about, I should not have had my ovaries removed. And let me tell you why, yes, I should have had my ovaries removed. Because I had some precancerous cells in my cervix, and ovaries are a gland producing organ, the risk of those cancer cells coming back and settling in my ovaries was pretty significant. And now that my ovaries are gone, number one, I do not miss them. And number two, the risk of me getting any sort of female cancer now has decreased drastically. It really is a peace of mind to know that my ovaries are no longer in there and can cause me an issue. Now that takes me to the whole menopause and hormone thing. Because my ovaries were removed during my hysterectomy, I was instantly put into surgical menopause. I did a whole video about that. It was very traumatic to me what happened and how quickly the menopause symptoms set in, but I now am using the estrogen patch. I put it right back here, high up on my behind. I change it twice a week. It has completely stopped all menopause symptoms. I don't have night sweats. I don't have hot flashes. I don't have any of the things. So the estrogen patch is working fantastic for me. My patch is 0 0.0375 milligrams and I change it out twice a week. My daughter the other day made the funniest comment. She said, mom, how come when she named one of her friends, my friend said that when her mother went through menopause, her friend said that her mother for over a year was just 
miserable. You couldn't talk to her. You couldn't be around her. She snapped at everybody. She cried all the time. She, you know, had all of these things. And this girl was telling my daughter how bad it was to be around her mother when her mother was going through menopause. And she, my daughter, asked me, how come I am not that way? Because I am in full-blown menopause. And it got me thinking. I guess I consider myself lucky. The fact that my ovaries were removed during my surgery, I don't have to go through that gradual decline of hormones. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to go through my body adjusting and the ups and downs of menopause. I don't have to figure out my hormone levels and try to determine what hormones I need to even everything out. I have no hormones. Zero. They were all taken out with my ovaries. I put on the estrogen patch. It completely stops my hormone symptoms and life is great. And in hindsight, which hindsight is always 2020, right? In hindsight, I do now consider myself lucky. I am glad that I had my ovaries removed and menopause was instant and now here I am and everything is great because I feel for the women that have to naturally go through menopause. I can see now being on the other side of it, how horrible and confusing and questioning and all of the guesswork that has to go into that process. I cannot even imagine what that is like. And I'm just glad it was over for me in an instant and now things are great. So another funny story about my estrogen patch. So I change it out twice a week. And right before I get in the shower, I take off the patch. Actually, I changed my patch today. And I don't put on a new patch until I've showered and my body is completely dry. And, I, you know, I give it about 20 minutes after I've had a shower. So the other day I was in the shower and I was rinsing and washing and realized I forgot to take the patch off of my booty. So I pulled it off in the shower and stuck it on the side of the shower. When I got out of the shower, I took a tissue and I grabbed the patch to put it in the trash. So later that night, my husband went to take a shower and he sends me a text from inside the shower with this picture. And I replied back and said, is that my estrogen patch? And he said, I, I think so. Then he said, can I touch it? What do I do? Do you need to come get it out of the shower? I'm afraid to touch it. I'm afraid to get estrogen on my hands. And I went in there. I said, you're not going to get estrogen on your hands. It is fine. I thought I picked it up. And I did pick it up. But apparently it slipped out of my tissue and fell in the floor of the shower. And that's where he found it. Because a little sucker is only this big. And it is completely clear. So I didn't realize I had dropped it. And he stepped in the shower and there it was. So we had a good laugh over that because he was so afraid he should not touch the estrogen patch. And we always joke that on I, I change my patch on Mondays and Thursdays. And the little joke between us is I'm putting on fresh hormones. So like I said earlier, I have six incision scars now in my belly area. Everything is healed. There is no pain from the scars. I can barely even see them. When I do go out in the sun, I put 50 sunscreen on my stomach because the feeling of sun directly on my stomach area did, does still give me a little bit of a zingy feeling. So I will lay a t-shirt or my cover up over my stomach if I'm out in our pool or sitting in a lounge chair or something. And I do make sure to keep it heavily covered in sunscreen, which seems to cut down on that feeling. My scars are looking great. They're barely visible at this point, and I think they're just going to continue to get better. One thing I have noticed about my belly area, I have not put on any weight since my surgery. I have not gotten bigger, but my stomach is starting to change. The look of my stomach area is definitely starting to change. The best way to describe it is I almost feel like the area between the bottom of my rib cage and the top of my hip bone has gotten smaller. I've not gotten shorter, but that area has compressed itself. So my stomach and any belly fat that I did have is has gotten squished. So it's like I have a little belly that sticks out and a little roll of 
back fat because everything went wrong. And I don't know that that's related to the surgery. It very well could be because for well over a year now, I have not done sit-ups, crunches. I have not used my core or my abdominal muscles at all. Before the surgery, I couldn't because of the fibroid. And then after the surgery, I had to heal. I wasn't ready. And my body still tells me, I don't think I'm ready for you to do that. And I'm listening to my body because as I've gotten released from my doctor and I've begun to be more active, I walk, I walk longer, and then I walk longer, and then I walk longer. And last week, I hit the longest point of walking that I have done since my surgery. I would go out on my walk and do about 8,000, 9,000 steps. And the next day, I would have just a little soreness. And the soreness is coming from two specific locations in my abdomen. I also recently moved some furniture in my office. You can tell my office is not decorated because I'm in the middle of redoing this room. I got that same soreness coming out of the same two very specific spots in my stomach. So I'm trying to listen to my body and I feel like my body is saying to me, I'm not ready for you to start doing ab exercises. So I'm wondering if this feeling of a belly or this squished feeling is because my abdominal muscles have not been used for so long that I need to use them. I need to use them and strengthen them again. Or is it coming from the fact that I had a hysterectomy and my uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, and cervix were all removed and those organs took up space and now that they're gone, everything is collapsed a little bit. I don't know the answer. But that is just a feeling I have. And when I look at myself in the mirror, that is sort of what I see. So that is something I've got to figure out. It's a question for my doctor on my next doctor's visit. And it'll be interesting to see what he tells me. So by sharing my surgery and recovery story on my channel, I feel like I'm helping women who have this in their future. And that really is why I made the decision to document my story in video. And to be honest, before I had my surgery, I wasn't so sure that I wanted to share this on my channel. It's not easy to publicly, you know, announce to the world your health issues and talk about your body and your medical care and your medical history and show pictures of yourself. But there is not a day that goes by since I released my original video about my surgery that I have not received some sort of contact from a woman who is scared to death because this surgery is in her future or someone who has had the surgery and is unsure of what she's feeling. And because those women have reached out to me, I feel like I have done something good. By my information, being out in the world, I am helping somebody else. And so that's why I continue to put these videos out when there's something important to say. And hitting a six month post-op milestone really is something important to say, I feel. And it's when I finally have the surgery firmly behind me and I can realize all of the benefits and all of the positives and know that all of the pain and the long recovery that I went through were actually good for me, better for me. My life is better and it turned out to be a very positive experience for me and I want to share that with the world. So if you have any questions for me about recovery, what you're feeling, what you can expect, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll get back with you. See you later.